All right, let's take a look now about what we can do to get our parts from the schematic down onto the PCB. We've placed all our parts, we've opened libraries, added libraries, modified parts. Well, let's keep moving forward because obviously the ultimate goal here is to have a print a circuit board like this from our drawings. So I'm going to come up to my toolbars up here where it says design and click on it. And I'll see where it says update PCB document. Now the update in the PCB document means it's going to take the information from my schematic and update it to our PCB document. So let's click on that. Update PCB document. All right, here's our engineering change order, and you'll see all the things that it wants to do here, right? It wants to add components, add pins to nets, component class members, and the last thing it says add rooms. We're going to let it do all these things. I'm going to hit validate changes, and here it gives me some red X's. It's not happy about some parts, but let's tell it to execute the changes. And this is a common thing with Altium. I had all those red X's, but they turned into green checks. I don't know why it does it. It's always done it. Here we are at version 18. It still does it. All right, let's close this. Now we moved all the parts, right, from our schematic over to our PCB. And you'll see here all the parts ended up inside this magenta colored box. If I left click on the box I can move that whole box around with all the parts in it that little box is the room and that's where we saw at the very bottom of a change order said add room now, the room's not going to be real useful for us at this point and uh, there'll probably be a video later that'll explain rooms and what you can do with them but we don't need a room so how do I get rid of it well let me show you that I can grab a part inside the room and move it around and I can click on the room. If I click on the room and hit delete, the room will go away. And that's good because we won't need it. So I'm going to do that and save it. I'm going to go back to the schematic and show you how to set up Altium so it won't make rooms when you don't need them. If I come under project and project options, there's a tab here that says class generation. And here it says generate rooms. I'm going to uncheck that so we won't generate rooms on this project anymore. Back to my PCB. Okay, so here's all our parts. There's that crazy little can that the op amp came in. Here's our B and C connector, right? Our bypass caps, our regular resistors we're using for our feedback. Excuse me. Here's our output resistor that was surface mount so i'm going to go through a couple of things here and show you how i like to set things up you'll notice on the bottom of the screen here there's an x and a y number it's going to tell us where we are all right so it's telling me the corner of this board if i hold control and roll my mouse wheel i can zoom in it's telling me the corner of this board is basically one inch by one inch so i'm not starting at zero i'm starting at one inch by one inch if I want to start at zero, then I, I need to change my origin. So let's change the origin. I'm going to use this toolbar up here to change my origin. Now, in order to see that toolbar, I went under View and Toolbars, and I turned on the PCB standard, Utilities, and Wiring. So I have these toolbars up on my screen all the time. So I'll come up here to this toolbar, and you'll see this one right here. It says Set Origin. I'm going to click on that, and there's my marker. You'll see I'm at 1 inch by 1 inch on the bottom left. When I click this, it turns into 0 by 0. So now I've set my origin. I'm going to zoom to fit. There we go. And you'll see this is now at 0. And here's all my parts. Now, these white lines that connect everything, these are the nets. These are the nets that show where this wiring needs to go, how this thing's going to connect. And if you remember, 
we had a three pin horizontal I did spacebar to rotate three pin horizontal that was our power in we had a two pin vertical that was our input but let's take a look this says p2 but it doesn't give me any information so i'm going to double click this guy my properties come up and you'll see here the comment says input but it's not visible if i click this my input becomes my comment says input becomes visible so now I can grab that comment and rotate it, put it wherever I want. And I can do the same, this B and C. It says B and C. I'm going to make it visible, and we're going to change that in the schematic and do an update later so we can see how that works. So I'll grab this guy and rotate him. He's going to go over here somewhere, my op amp. Now let's take a look and remember what we did in our schematic. On our power input, we had C1, C2, C3, and C4. Easy to remember. So here's our power input. So let's get our caps over there. Here's C1. You see where it wants to wire? You can see the little white lines. Now watch what happens if I rotate it. Now the nets have to cross each other right here. So I'm going to make a smarter move and do this so they won't have to cross each other. I'll move this text. And here's C4. And then I have C1 and C2 need to go there. So if I put C2 here, you see it wants to connect there. That works. And C3, yeah, it can go right here. All right, now C5 and C6 were the bypass caps for our op amp. R2 was our input. Oh, well, here's R2. There's our little op amp. I had bypass caps I had R1 that was the feedback resistor I'm going to rotate it so it faces the right direction you'll notice when I do this the nets have to cross it'll probably route but why don't we make life easier and a little cleaner so I'll do like this now my output resistor I made surface mount so there's the surface mount resistor and here's our b and c connector kind of have everything laid out there i'm going to hit the save button and if you look at it i kind of have everything here that'll work uh, but look at my board my board is this big that's the default size of the board now if we want to change the size of the board uh, we can do that and i'll show you how to do that First of all, I'd look and see how, how efficient am I being here with my parts. Can I make everything a little bit smaller? I'm going to hit Control A for all. And I'm going to do a button here. I'm going to grab these parts and move them down a little bit. So I just highlighted them all, so it will take a little less space. And then I'm going to grab these guys and move them down a little bit. Now you see I was moving parts over and I got in the way of the designators. There we go. Okay, so what if I moved this over this way? And I moved this guy here. Take a little less room. Okay. So let's zoom to fit. And now I want to make 
a new shape for my box. So let's do that, and I'll show you how to do it. It's going to be different than it was in Altium 17. In Altium 18, we're going to tell it place a keep out track. Of course, I need to be on the keep out layer here first. Let's select that tab. Place a keep out track. And I'll zoom in and out because it makes it easier to be accurate. And I'll start here and I'll come up. Let's see, I need to go to at least here. I'm going to zoom in some. Okay, and I'll click. Let's see how I do. Oh, I should move that up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. I want to come out here. How far out do I want to come? Maybe I want it to come just to the edge because this is a, a threaded part. We could actually have a nut on this and stick it right in a panel. So if I move my mouse right here, I can look at the bottom left and see that it says that my X is at 2.06 inches. So let me come up here. 2.06 I can click there and I'll come right down until my Y is at zero and then I'll come across right back to my origin and then I'm going to right click to stop placing. I'm going to click on one so it's highlighted. You see it's highlighted. I'm going to hit tab. When I hit tab, you'll see it will select all of them. So now when I zoom out, the entire keep out is selected. That's important because I'm going to show you how to make a board shape. If I come up here to design, board shape, define the board shape from selected objects. And I selected my keep out, so I'm going to say OK. All right, now look, my board shape has been selected from the keep out. So I now have a little rectangular shaped board. Oh, but I look at this thing and I'm like, oh, I want to make a couple of changes. Do I really want this footprint? Not really. And don't I want this to say output something different? Yeah. So let's save, go back to our schematic, and I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm going to double click my B and C here. For the properties, I'm going to change this to output. That's good. And then let's look at this guy, my footprint. Do I have any other options? It, right now it shows me that little can. It looks like a water tower. There are other 741s I could pick that would have the right footprint, but let me show you how to change a footprint on a part that has one selected already. I'm going to tell it add. And what do I want to add? I'm going to add a PCB footprint. I'm going to browse. And which library? Well, let's go to the miscellaneous devices library. And here's all these footprints. You see I have all these possibilities. This is the footprint I want, a dip 8. That's going to be like the little 741 you had in previous semesters and previous labs. But let me tell you, if I wanted to, I could come down here to any footprint at all and tell it I wanted it to be that one, and it would do it. I want it to be this one. It would put it there. I only have eight pins on my LM741, but it would put it to the first eight pins. Pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So be aware of that. I can put any schematic part to any footprint. Don't make the mistake of placing a schematic part that has the footprint you want. Place the proper schematic part and point it to the footprint you want. So I'm going to tell it I want it to be a dip 8 and say OK and OK. All right, that's good. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back to my design, update my PCB, You'll notice now it's not adding the room after I removed it because I told it no more rooms. And it's going to change a comment and change a footprint. So execute those changes. 
close. Look, this says output now. And there is my footprint. Now, once I place this here, I might find out I need to move some other parts around. Look at this cap. I have the nets crossing. So I'll rotate that cap. I'm going to move the designator so it's not buried. Let's see. This guy looks okay. All the rest of it looks okay. That's not too bad. I got a, an okay board here. But if I make this board and I want to mount it in a box, how am I going to mount this board to a box? I could have a hole in the box and run a nut on this part and thread it in. But let's think about another way to mount this guy. This looks like it's not the best idea. So I'm going to save it. Go back to my schematic. Schematic libraries. I'm going to go to the ECE library. And I'm going to pick a hole. Just a hole. A hole's all I need to mount it with. This is 125 thousandths. It'll fit most of the little plastic standoffs that we have. So I'm going to tell it place hole. And there's going to be four holes. Just like that. And I'm going to go to tools and annotate it. Whoops, I want to annotate quietly. Four designators. Now they have updates. I can save that. I'm going to take my design and update it to the PCB. Execute. All right, there's the four holes. Now, it's green right now. And why is it green? It's green to show me there's an error. And the error is that these are too close to that other part. Right? It's too close to here. So I'm going to move these around. I'll probably turn that one green by doing that. And then we'll clean this up a little bit. Now, this is too close to here, so I'll just move that guy. I might move this cap over a little bit. And the names. Now I want to do top overlay. Okay, now I have holes there. Some way to mount my board. Let's save that. All right, I got all my parts on my board. I have holes to mount it with. I have labels to tell me what things are. I think uh, for this video, we're good. I'm going to stop right here.